Google Earth for Chrome. Hello everyone, Lisa Louise Cook here. And did you notice when you go into Google Earth Pro now, and probably even Google Earth, but I hope you're using Google Earth Pro, that this little pop-up window greets you. And that's because on Earth Day in 2017, Google decided to launch a whole new Google Earth Pro for Chrome. Now, it's really easy to go check it out. And there are some differences, so I wanted to cover that with you. Click Google Earth for Chrome. And as you can see, it launches earth.google.com slash web. This is a different animal than Google Earth Pro. And the main reason it is, is because it is on the web. It is on a tab on your web browser, right? So you're visiting their website. When you're using Google Earth Pro, you're using software that you downloaded from the Google page. And so that sits on your hard drive. This is right here in the web so that you can use it from your home computer on a Chrome browser. Uh, you can also use it on your laptop and probably on your iPad. But let me kind of show you what this does. Over here on the left, we're just gonna shake the dice because we're feeling lucky. And you can see that it zooms right into a location it thinks you might find kind of interesting. But look at the view. It is so different than Google Earth Pro. I don't have all the specifics yet if they are dealing with different imagery. I believe they are in some respects. You can zoom in here, drag around, right? Zoom out, move, very cool. We can also use the zoom buttons, kind of do that real zip in, zip out kind of a thing. You can use Street View. Street View is a little different. Down here in the right hand corner, you grab this guy and he kind of dangles from your mouse. And then you can decide where you want to put him. Let's put him right here. Wow, there we are on the sidewalk, <laughs> looking up at the palm trees in India. There we go. You can still double click on the street, head down the road very quickly. If you want to exit out of street view, just click them again. And it'll pull you back up so you can kind of see where you're going. Now, here's a little trick. Hold the shift key down on your keyboard and now use your mouse and move. Whoa, <laughs> now you are flying and you are looking from these different perspectives. Isn't that amazing? Uh, let's head somewhere we know they're gonna have tons of 3D buildings. We'll go to New York City. So we search up there in the box, fly across the globe. And you can see these little information cards pop up here on the right hand side. Uh, there are points of interest. Now, when we talk about layers in the layers panel, those are points of interest. And that's kind of what they're doing. So they're, they're working with these layers that we we're not used to using in the layers panel in a very different way. You're not going to find them in the same way that you do in the software. We have a lot of them turned on. We can click points of interest. These points of interest will take you into the various places that they think are interesting and touristy around New York. Points of interest are also, though, what, what like I said, those items that you would find in the layers panel. They call them POIs. And here's my places. Here we can do Voyager. Up here with the lines, you click the three lines, and now you can see map style. Click that. Map style is kind of your layers panel. So you can clean it out. You can do exploration, include absolutely everything. I would start with clean. And then you can also customize. So down here, I think what they're trying to do is make this a really kind of no brainer experience. If you don't want to mess with layers, uh, they're going to guide you through the different ways, the different, you know, types of layers you might want turned on, but you can still come down here to custom and open these up and start choosing 
out of here what you would like to have on and off. Maybe you don't want all the medical buildings and all the schools to show up. Okay. Maybe you do want places of worship because you're looking for church records or you're looking for cemeteries or that kind of thing. We have lots of roads turned on. And when you open roads, you can see all the different ones we've got turned on. We can turn these off highways, arterial roads, and the local roads. So that's where you're going to find what was layers in your software. And don't worry, the software is still there, but this is just a new experience in the web browser. I think they're really trying to introduce more people to Google Earth. Now let's zoom in. And as you can see, 3D buildings is kind of a default kind of a thing. And you can see them here. If we press shift. Now you're really seeing them. I'm using my mouse to, to pull the screen around. I'm holding the shift key down. And we are flying, looking at all of the detail of these 3D buildings. What's my summation of the new Google Earth for your Chrome web browser? I think it's awesome. I think it's very cool to explore. It is about exploring the world. Is it better than Google Earth Pro for genealogy? Right now, I say no. And that's because there is so much more customization that you can do in Google Earth Pro and recording videos and doing all kinds of things that this experience is really about introducing people to the wonderful world of Google Earth. And Google Earth Pro is really the full featured version. Who knows, they may end up doing away with software if they can incorporate all of the features that are currently in existence in Google Earth Pro into this Chrome version. But I think that's on the horizon. And for now, you can enjoy a good look at the horizon right here from Google Earth for Chrome. I hope that helps. Hey, go check out my free video uh, at genealogygems.com. It's under the video tab. You're going to find Google Earth for genealogy, and you can watch that one hour class to get you started in Google Earth Pro. I'm Lisa Louise Cook. Thanks so much for watching. Happy flying the globe.